Housing issues in America now, the constitutional right to bear arms. Joining me is Alan Gottlieb, the founder of the Second Amendment Foundation. Also here is Dan Gross, president of the Brady Center and the Brady Campaign. Welcome to you both. Just had a very uh, moving interview there with the parents of a young woman who lost her life in Aurora. The, the connection between what happened there and what happened in Oregon is that both of these shooters used an AR-15 semi-automatic weapon. I suppose my obvious question to you, Alan Gottlieb, is this, is why would anybody in America who's not in the military or the police force need to ever have one of these weapons? Well, first of all, Piers, these aren't fully automatic weapons like you get in the military or many police departments have. They're semi-automatic and they fire one bullet but pull the trigger just like any other semi-automatic rifle that may not look like a military-style rifle. So when you try to demonize a gun by what it looks like, you should really look at how it functions. Some of these AR-15s actually fire 22 caliber bullets, which are a lot smaller than what a hunting rifle would be, as an example. So that's not really... It, yeah, but that is, yes, but with respect, sir, that, that, is. Is, that is not the case in either the incident in Oregon or Aurora, as you well know. And I come back again, and you, look at, you can look at it one way. Um, I just, I'm baffled as to what anybody would need a weapon of this sophistication for if the purpose is simply to well, defend yourselves. Explain to me. Well, the weapon isn't that sophisticated, but to be honest about it, while on your network on CNN, I remember watching during the L.A. riots, Korean merchants on top of the rooftops of their buildings making sure they weren't robbed or, or, or burnt down like was happening all around them. In the area of that in Los Angeles, those are the only people whose businesses survived because they had these types of weapons who, on, on their rooftops, and the, and the looters, the rioters, the, the arsonists went elsewhere. There's a good reason. And I watched it on your network. Right, but you may also have seen on my network the coverage of the Aurora shooting. James Holmes, the killer there, had four weapons, including one of these AR-15s, but he also bought 6,000 rounds of ammunition on the Internet. He was armed to the teeth, and he also had protective gear on him, which is also what happened with Jacob Roberts in Oregon. They planned these meticulously, and they went in with these rifles, and had the weapon not jammed, in the mall yesterday, we could have been looking at a death toll higher than what happened in Aurora. And again, I say to you, why do people in America, outside of the military and the police, need to have the ability to have an AR-15? I don't understand. Well, I just gave you the example. I, I just gave you one example in the LA riots. Well, you're saying that if, if there's a riot the, 20, uh, hi, wait, Pierce, a riot 20 hi, hi, years ago, hi, hi, oh, hypothetically, hang on, hang on. You're, you're talking about a riot 20 years ago as being well, the only we all, reason. We also had the only reason why Hurricane Andrew, unstable young people in America are able to walk in and buy AR-15 semi-automatic rifles and go into shopping malls and to movie theatres and to blow away as many Americans as they possibly can using these magazines which can carry up to 100 rounds a minute in the case of James Holmes. And we don't know yet about they, Oregon, they but we know he had several magazines. They don't do 100 rounds a minute because it well, isn't Well, James Holmes shot 70 people, well, didn't he? only it? shoots one round James per Holmes pull of the shot 70 Oregon. people. So how ought you be a little factually correct? Let me give you're you not, some you're, facts. You're, again, you're not being accurate. Let me give you some well, facts. Let me give you some facts. Now, let me give Why you a fact. Why the other side of the equation? Let me give you a fact. Wait a minute. Year to, two Wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute. Someone uses a firearm to You want to talk facts. Let me give you a fact. If you want to get good public opinion, if you want to get a good solution, you've got to look at both sides of the equation. Can you stop talking? If you want to have a debate, you've got to look at both sides. Yeah, to debate, you've got to let me speak. Let me speak. It's my show. Here's a fact for you. James Holmes in Aurora shot 70 people. He killed 12. I spoke to the parents of one of the people he killed just now. This debate is not about the right to defend yourself in a home. It's about why America continues to allow deranged young people to buy these semi-automatic AR-15s. I don't get it. You explain to me why, other than well, the Piers, riots of think, 20 years ago, well, listen, that they should be allowed to continue think, Piers, to easily purchase or steal these weapons. I should be able to have a gun. Piers, deranged people shouldn't be able to have a gun. But, but if we talk about that, that's one thing. But your position basically is nobody should have a gun. You think the Second Amendment only protects muskets, as you tweeted. The fact that the that's not my is position at all. Don't that's not my position at all. Well, you tweeted that. Yeah, you stop tweeted twisting that. my words. I was talking about the I way... I have a copy of the tweet right here. I know what I tweeted. You I tweeted, tweeted it. it. Obviously, I know what I tweeted. It was my tweet. So then Here's what I said. <laughs> I said when the... Found... It's not funny. Why are you laughing? Because you're not telling the truth. That's yeah, why I'm Why don't you stop laughing? It looks creepy, all right? Let me turn to you, Dan Gross. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let me turn to you, Dan Gross. I don't find any of this remotely funny. 
Let me turn to you, Dan Gross. The, the reference I made in my tweet after what happened before was that I don't believe when the Founding Fathers constructed the Second Amendment that they ever imagined that young people in America would be able to buy AR-15 semi-automatic weapons and go into movie theatres and to shopping malls and kill as many innocent Americans as they could get their hands on with these very high-powered weapons capable of firing off multiple bullets at a very high speed. Um, what do we do about this? I mean, we've already heard these parents very movingly. Both of them own guns. One was a former member of the NRA. I, you know, I don't have any yeah. issue with an American's right to defend themselves in their home. I have a massive issue with the ease that people who are clearly unstable can just get their hands on AR-15s and commit these atrocities. Yeah, you know, listen, <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I think, and it really, with all due respect, doesn't matter what you think. It matters what the vision is of the American public. And, you know, we all as a nation, we know we are better than this. That's why we started this website and this petition, wearebetterthanthis.org, because, you know, we're better than a nation with 32 more murders every day, shootings in malls and movie theaters and places of worship. And the reality is we need to have an open, honest conversation about what we can do to solve, solve the problem. Um, the American public, you know, do they think that the answer to violence is more, is more violence, that the answer to guns is more guns? Um, you know, I, I would love to open that up in the public discourse and have the American public decide, because I think what we would find is that this issue is in nearly as polarizing as the uh, reaction of Mr. Gottlieb would, would imply. The overwhelming majority of Americans know we're better than this, and they support solutions that can prevent tragedies like what happened to your last guests and what happened in uh, in, in Portland, in, in Oregon, uh, last night. You know, another solution I would put out there is background checks. Mr. Gottlieb said, let's talk about keeping guns out of the hands. Checks. Excuse me, sir. Um, and Mr. Gottlieb said, let's keep guns out of the hands of of, of uh, mentally deranged people. You know, 40, as, as those guests, very um, well-educated guests said in your last segment, 40% of all gun sales are not subject to background checks in our country. So you at the top of the show, um, Pierce, talked about how many federally licensed firearm dealers there are. That only represents 60% of gun sales where there are background checks. So there are 40%. So, you know, keeping a gun out of the hand of a convicted felon, out of a convicted domestic abuser, out of the hands of somebody who's dangerously mentally ill has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. And I would hope that Mr. Gottlieb agrees. And, you know, I, my hope is that I we can agree. find him good. And so my hope is that we can find a middle ground that together we can advocate for sensible solutions like criminal background checks on the other 40 percent of gun sales that aren't subject to them and maybe we can have the civil discourse that's going to be necessary to um to, to solve this problem that the overwhelming majority of americans want to have okay mr gottlieb let me ask you this would you genuinely believe that if everybody had been armed in the shopping mall uh, this would have prevented this shooter from killing anybody and would you encourage people who go to shopping malls in America tomorrow to go armed. Piers, first of all, you start out with the statement, should every, if, uh, would I encourage everyone to be armed? I never encourage everybody to be armed. Oh, what I think it is is a Who do you encourage issue. to be armed? You should, have the right to be, you should have the right to be armed. This shopping mall had a sign at every single door going into it that said, no firearms allowed. The theater in Aurora had a sign, no firearms allowed. These become killing zones for criminals. They can go in, victims, it's a victim disarmament zone. That's not a way to do it. If you look at almost all these mass shootings, where do they happen? In gun-free school zones, on college campuses where you can't have a gun, in malls where you can't have a gun, in movie theaters where you can't have a gun. Doesn't that make, give you an alarm bell? I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what makes alarm bells to me is that until 2004, <laughs> following the ban on these assault weapons, then there was a ban on these AR-15s, and now there isn't. Why not? Why did you go backwards? Why do you feel comfortable, okay, well, if that's what you do, Mr Gottlieb, why do you feel comfortable in allowing my young people, who may or may not be deranged, to have such easy access to these particular type of assault weapons? I just don't get it. Okay, well, first of all, Pierce, let me say that there really wasn't a ban. There was a ban on new production uh, of um, anybody who had one was grandfathered in it. And in the year where they discussed banning them, there was a 10-year supply they sold in one year because people wanted them uh, for self-protection before they were banned. And, and the ban disappeared at sunset 10 years later. All the ban did was put the guns on the street 10 years earlier. And what was the effect? No increase in crime using those particular kinds of firearms at all. Unlike Britain and the UK, where firearms are banned, 
Th this past year, you've had a 35% increase in gun crime. Gun crime has gone up every year for the last four years. Oh, gun do crime me a favor. What it was Honestly, they banned guns in the UK. Do me a favor. Do you know how many people got murdered with guns in Britain on average in the last three or four years? Have you any idea? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, less because it's the lowest population in the United States. How many? But to be honest with you, well, well, let you me just analyze knife, that ridiculous you have statement. knife attacks. Let me give you, you a knife keen on, in the UK you're keen every on single fact. week. Mr. Gottlieb, knife you, violence can you has gone up 10 again, can you stop talking? Let me, let me just well, interrupt. Why don't you look at both sides? You I'm going to give you both sides. Side. You've just said there's a massive surge in gun crime in Britain. Let me tell you the reality. Correct. Right? In America, in the last three or four years, you've averaged 11 to 12,000 murders from guns in a population of what? 330, 340 million? In Britain, we have 60 million that, people. That, by the way, right? that about a sixth about of the population. We have 35 to 40 maximum murders from guns a year. Are you doing the same math that I'm doing? Yeah, okay. Well, explain to me why it's double in Britain than it was before the ban and why it's up 35% this year if you have a ban. Gun control doesn't work. Criminals don't obey laws. That's why they're called criminals. It's just, it's just total claptrap to argue that. It's total <laughs> claptrap. And again, let me just leave you with one last question, which you haven't answered. Do you feel comfortable, given what happened in Aurora and now in Oregon, do you feel comfortable that tomorrow another unstable 21, 22-year-old kid who may have seen these stories in the papers, maybe watching this very show, and may be inspired to go out and do exactly the same thing and can easily go and purchase in many states in America an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle and magazines on the internet that can explode hundreds of bullets in rapid fire time. Do you, you feel comfortable that that is easy to do in your country, Mr. Gottlieb? It should be easy for law-abiding people, for people who are mentally, mentally uh, deranged or people who commit violent crimes, know it shouldn't be, and we need to work on that. That's 1% of the population. That's where the effort should go, not attacking the rights of the other 99% of the population. Okay, let's leave it there. Mr. Gottlieb and Mr. Gross, thank you both very much for joining me.